Welcome to the Wayfaring Panda. I'm Annette. Today I'm participating in a YouTube hop called Scraps to Embellishments put on by Ginger from Ginger's Corner. And this week's theme is bear hugs, which I had to do because I love bears and I have all kinds of bear stuff. I decided to go with a panda with my Elizabeth Craft Design die and then I'm pairing that with this bamboo die from 2D Designs, which I got on clearance, 40% off, you can see, a long time ago. So I don't even know if this brand exists anymore. I don't even know what store I got it from. In any case, I'm cutting out some sage-colored paper, which obviously I'm using the whole paper for this because I'm going to be cutting out several large pieces because I'm going to participate in the swap where I'll be swapping for these, plus I'm making some for my own scrapbook. But if you're just making it on your own, you only need about a fourth the sheet of paper. So it could be from a scrap. Of course, when you do these die cuts, you could use white paper and color it with whatever your color preference is with either Distress Ink, markers, paint, whatever you like. But if you used solid colored papers or pattern papers, then you don't have to do as much coloring and that saves time. I'm just using my Distress Ink old paper and peeled paint to pounce it over my bamboo to give it a little bit more texture and interest. I'm using my Elizabeth Craft Designs Panda Die to cut out my pandas. And this is actually the first time I've used the die, so I'm just trying to figure out which pieces are for white and which are for black, because I'm going to make it traditionally to start with. So the largest one is for the face, and you can tell because it has an etched mouth on it. And then the next piece I found is this one that looks like a half circle. That's for the bottom part of the body. And I'm just comparing the picture to find out which piece is for which. So the solid color will be the white on where these feet are. And the one where the paw prints are, I'll take that off and that'll be saved for the black pieces. And then the dye that looks round will also be for the body underneath his head. And then the ones with the two oblong pieces will be for his arms, which will also be black. And then I have trouble deciding on these little pieces. Turns out the two largest circles, where the two are, are for his ear, and the little circles are for the inside of his ear. And then I also just decide to do the one with all the really, really tiny detail pieces in white. And there's a trick to that, because some of it will be white and black and I'll show you later what to do with that. And I'm just using the same green paper to cut out that little bamboo piece that the panda is holding in his hand and then I ink it the same way I did with the other bamboo so that it will match. And of course this you just need a really tiny piece of paper for it. I used the rest of the dies to cut out some black cardstock and of course you could just use scraps for that also since they're small. And I'm just using this picture to help me figure out how to put them together. So there's an boss line where the panda's mouth is and I just use that with a thin black marker to draw his mouth. Then I just use my Nuvo Deluxe Glue and the picture to help me assemble the panda. I do have trouble getting the glue out sometimes because it's like a third full, it's getting towards the end and I do try to put it upside down but it doesn't always stay upside down. Now for those of you that are wondering, yes, a panda is a bear. It has been changed several times in the scientific community. At one point, they thought all the pandas were part of the raccoon family or related to them. And now they believe the pandas are just similar to them, but they're not. And the giant panda is now not considered a panda, but it's considered a bear. The only true panda is the red panda. And they do share some qualities, and of course they live in the same area, and they both eat bamboo. But they've done some testing, molecular testing, on the panda bear, and apparently it showed that it is technically of the bear family. As I mentioned earlier, this is part of a hop with scraps to embellishments, which is part of Ginger's Corner's Facebook group, and that's where she has the swaps that are once a week. So the hop will be the theme of what the next swap will be. So it's on Saturday and then you can sign up for the swap. So if you want to do the bear hug swap, 
you can sign up for tomorrow on her Facebook group, which is Ginger's Corner. And they do have groups, of course, for the United States, but if you live somewhere other than the United States, there are groups throughout the world, so you may be able to swap with people in your own country so that you don't have to pay for international shipping if you would like to participate. And you can also choose to do whichever swap themes you want and not do others, so you can do whichever weeks you would like to sign up for. And of course, you don't have to swap. You can just watch these videos for inspiration and make your own embellishments for cards or scrapbooking or junk journals or whatever type of crafts that you like to do. For the pieces on his face that were cut out of white paper that need to be black, you can just color that with a marker. And I was going to use my black Copic marker, but it's completely bone dry. Now, apparently this is a problem with the production because I've been running across this more recently and I've checked into it. I was wondering if anyone else knows if maybe the regular Copic markers don't have this problem because I think that's what I'm going to switch to if there's not a problem with the regular Copic markers. So then I just switched to my W9 marker which is a warm gray and it's practically black and so dark. So anyway, if you have any ideas about that problem, it, what it seems to be is something to do with the caps get loose, which I've noticed it's always on the chisel tip side, but once it goes completely dry, even re putting the ink in won't work. You'll just be re wasting your ink. So of course, I don't want to keep investing in these if this keeps happening, but I really do like my Copic markers, so I'd like to find what's the best solution to it. Then with these really tiny pieces for his eyes, I had trouble deciding which ones were which because they're all white. And I also had some black pieces and I weren't sure which ones were scraps from cutting out the eyes, which the first one I tried tended to be that because then it just made it all black. So there's a white piece that is the exact same size as the eye hole. That's what you put in so that it's all one level of paper. And then there's a tiny black one that I cut out. Or actually, there were tiny white ones and I color those with um, the W9 also. And then to give it a little bit more detail, I just use a jelly roll pen to go over um, the eyes and add the dots, just like it shows in the pictures. Now there's also a tongue piece, but I couldn't find it that you color red, so I just colored a tongue on instead. And I just used a red marker for that. I used my lightest gray marker, which is W00, to add some shading to his white fur. Finally, I used my Nouveau Deluxe Glue to adhere my panda to the bamboo. And the bamboo is higher, but the way that it's shaped, you could trim it off according to where you want to put it if the embellishment is too tall. Just to show you that you can get a different look for using the dies on some pattern paper. I'm using these scraps that I had from a six by six paper pad where I cut out some bags and these were the pieces that were left. So I'm gonna use this red one to cut out a rectangle and I'm using my Lawn Fawn Stitch Rectangle dies which has stitching around the edge. So I'm thinking if I use the other pieces that kind of look like fabric and then put it on top of this one, it might look like an applique quilt, or at least that's the look I'm going to go for. So I'm also cutting the same pieces I did before, and I'm using that light brown color that looks like burlap as my white, and the gingham, which is kind of a green gingham, for the black. I assembled the bear just like I did on the previous bear, so I didn't show that, and I added some lines for stitching detail, which I'll do some more of now. So I'm trying to decide if I like this bear better without the background or on this quilt type background. Let me know what you think. I decided to go ahead and add some stitching or all around. I thought that would help him pop and also make it look like he's appliqued onto this quilt fabric. Let me know what you think and if I pulled it off or should I put him on something else, maybe just a heart or something. What what do you think? As I mentioned earlier, this coincides with the swap that is on Ginger's Corner. So if you're interested in doing the swaps, 
The link is in the description below. And you can go check that out and you can sign up on Sunday for the bear hug swap or you can also sign up for other ones in the future as they come out each week. And look forward to other hops coming along each week for the different themes. Now some people will be participating in the hops every week and some people will just do occasionally. I plan to do at least once a month and maybe more than once a month, but at least once a month. You can also click on the list in the description below. There's a playlist that has all of the videos from all the hops in the past so that you can watch all the different videos for inspiration or you can go to the channels that are listed below to find the ones for this hop. I want to thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, please give it a like. I will also have all the products that I'm using in the description below. Some of these, of course, like the paper scraps are old, so I'm sure you wouldn't find them. Like the ones I used for the Christmas fair, those were a paper pack from Hobby Lobby from a long time ago, so I'm sure it's still not out there. The point is to use scraps that you've got in your craft room or in your wherever it is that you craft to see what you have and see what type of embellishments you can make with your scraps. I want to thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, please give it a like. And if you're not already a subscriber, I'd really appreciate if you can subscribe to my channel. Thank you and have a wonderful day.